Hi, Joe here from Shutterspeak Photography. Very nice to see your smiling face again here on YouTube. So, Viltrox had sent me out their 27 millimeter f1.2 Pro Series lens for Nikon Z. And I was like, ah, 27 millimeter, that's kind of an odd focal length. But it is an f1.2. So uh, it is a pro series, so let me give it a try. And, and I tell you what, it's one of these lenses that surprised me. I didn't think I was gonna love it, but it turns out I actually did love it, and I'm gonna tell you why. So first off, it is APS-C, so although it will work on any Nikon Z camera in crop sensor mode, it works best, of course, with your ZFC, Z30, Z50. Okay, I am filming this segment of the video right now on the lens on a Nikon Z30. And one of the things that I loved about it, which I didn't really see coming was, well, it's 27 millimeter. And, and although that sounds kind of odd, uh, when you convert that into full frame, it's about 40.5 millimeters or exactly 40.5 millimeters, right? So in the average size room, if you're filming video in a home office like I am, this room is about 10 feet wide. And right now I'm probably about eight feet from the camera. And you can see it really fills up the frame. So the focal length is actually perfect for indoors, uh, for like I said, like a home office type setup, uh, especially vlogging, things like that. YouTube videos, content creators are gonna love this focal length. But it's also a great street photography lens. And I mean, maybe even an astrophotography lens. So a few technical specs on this lens, autofocus, a fully auto lens, of course, uh, goes down to f1.2, as I mentioned, Pro Series. Comes in the Z mount. It is APS-C. Uh, in terms of lens elements, there are 15 elements arranged into 11 groups. And on the Nikon Z, it gives you a viewing angle of 55.2 degrees. There are 11 aperture blades for nice dreamy bokeh. And of course, internal focusing system, a silent stepping motor. Uh, let's see what else is important. 605 grams, so it's not overly heavy. It actually feels pretty good on a Z30. Overall, again, it's one of these things that just kind of surprised me. Didn't think that I was gonna like the lens as much as I did, but it turns out I really loved it. So let me show you a little bit of some of the samples in terms of photographs, and we'll take a look at a little bit of the bokeh, and we'll take a look at some lens calculation charts to see just how sharp this lens really is. And in case you're curious, I'm filming this right now at f2.8. And depth of field should be pretty good. It drops down all the way to 1.2 and I might be able to use it if I stepped all the way back, I could get about a probably a foot and a half or so of depth of field. And that's what you gotta watch on a lens that steps down all the way to 1.2 is in a short, distance like I'm doing right now, I might be able to get my eye in focus and my ear actually might be out of focus. But if I stepped all the way back to the shelves back there, I probably could get about a foot and a half of depth of field, which would be enough. But hey, again, let's take a look at the samples, especially the sharpness test, which I think are gonna surprise you. All right, so I just wanted to show you the build quality of this lens. It does have a lens function button here, which is appreciated. Autofocus, manual focus switch right there. And then on the side here, we have the click switch. And what the click switch does, if you're not familiar with it, is it changes the function of the aperture ring. This is great for people who are heavy into videography because when it's set with click off, it just rotates smoothly. And for photographers, if you wanted to click, now it'll just move one notch at a time and actually makes a little clicking sound, which you probably can't hear. Uh, but heavy metal construction. Uh, my only criticism of this is that the hood is just, just feels like it's gonna fall off at any moment. So the lens hood is just not tight enough on the body. It is just, you can see I can just barely nudge it and it'll just move out of position. So that would be my biggest criticism would be the lens hood. Maybe I just got a bad one, but even when you put it on the opposite way, you can see it's, it just feels like it's about to fall off. So 
that could be better, but everything else about the lens uh, in terms of quality, I thought was fantastic. You know, all metal on the back and a USB-C port for firmware updates. So build quality, otherwise seems fantastic with the exception of this connection to the lens hood. Again, your mileage may vary there. Let's take a look at some images. Okay, so some uh, basic pictures here at f11, and uh, the lens, of course, does very well at f11. The TARDIS, Doctor Who, I mean, hey, sci-fi, it's me. What did you expect, right? Let's take a look at some other ones again. At f11 and the Mystery Machine, and it just performs really well. I mean, you can see uh, nice, sharp, crisp detail, you know, a real nice looking image coming out of this lens. And of course, the Batmobile, again, F11. And you see, again, it's just, just a, a super sharp image there. You know, it just does a, an absolutely wonderful job. These are straight out of camera and just, you know, phenomenal pictures. Some uh, HDRs, so we'll take a look at that. This is at F4 right here, and you can see again, I mean, it looks great. We got great depth of field here, um, setting sun, and you know, just a wonderful image. F8, everything looking good. And another one at F8 as the sun just drops below the horizon there. And again, just uh, nice sharp images coming out of this lens. So let's look at some test charts, and this is really going to kind of tell the tale here. So this is at f1.2, and center sharpness is kind of what you'd expect at 1.2. It's good. It's not amazing, and corner sharpness looks pretty good, right? So let's compare it to 1.8, and you can see at 1.8, everything just now just pops right in and gets super sharp, or much sharper, sharper than 1.2, which again, as you would expect, and corners look amazing. And then as we move up, 2.8, looking fantastic. This is F4. You know, we got great color, reproduction, corners look good. You know, everything here that we would expect. So again, just the lens performing very well. Same here at 5.6, at F8. F11, and then finally at F16, which is the minimum aperture. So, and you can see it's not, again, and it's typical of these uh, filter ox lenses at 16. It's like, yeah, it's good. It's the same as like around almost F1.2. But, uh, you know, to me, the sweet spot of this lens is somewhere around 5.6 to 8, where it is just tack sharp looking amazing. Look at the corners, color, you know, everything here that you could ask for. You know, the lens is performing wonderfully. That's at 5.6. And let's take a look at F8. And again, same thing at F8. Everything looks just fantastic. Corner sharpness, colors, you know, everything across the board is, is what we would look for. So, yeah, so the lens performs in terms of sharpness very well. I don't see any problems here whatsoever with this lens and for whatever it's worth they send me a lens in a sealed box right off the assembly line i'm not getting a, a lens that viltrox tested and vetted and made sure it was super sharp and you know this is the same lens that you would buy from the store and as you could tell you know had they they probably wouldn't have sent me one with a shaky lens hood right so uh you know comes in a completely sealed box from the factory so Nothing special going on here. They're not stacking the deck or anything like that. So, but yeah, I'm super happy with this lens. Kind of surprised, really. Liked it a lot more than I thought I would. Okay, YouTube, so thanks for watching. I just wanted to say that I really appreciate you. And if this video helps you out, the best way that you can say thank you is to hit subscribe, hit the like button on this video, and of course, leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of this lens. If you're a content creator, do you think that this might be a lens that you would consider? I hope you do because I think it's a fantastic lens. Um, I, I really uh, enjoy my time testing it. So, hey, again, thanks 
for watching. There's no channel without you. I appreciate you, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So thanks, YouTube. Bye-bye.